Amy Lynn Bradley vanished on March 24, 1998, while on vacation with her parents and brother on the Royal Caribbean International cruise ship Rhapsody of the Seas. The ship was traversing the Caribbean Sea when the 23-year-old disappeared. Amy was mingling at the cruise ship's disco with her brother, other guests and the live band Blue Orchid prior to her disappearance. Alistair Douglas, popularly known as Yellow, a member of the band, said that he and Amy partied together but partied ways at 1am. Ron, Amy's father, reported seeing his daughter sleeping on the cabin balcony between 5.15 and 5.30am. When he woke up at 6am, she was gone. The last family member to speak to her was her brother Brad, who said goodnight to her before going to bed the night before. Myself and my parents have had to endure a lot of sadness, but the last thing that I ever said to Amy was, I love you, before I went to sleep that night. Knowing that that's the last thing I said to her has always been very comforting to me, Brad said. What do Maura Murray, Madeline McCann, Jimmy Hoffa, D.B. Cooper and Amy Lynn Bradley have in common? They all mysteriously vanished without a trace. Their disappearances have also garnered numerous theories on what happened to them. The disappearance of Amy Lynn Bradley is no different. In today's video, we are going to look at the prevailing theories and look at the case using Occam's razor principle. Encyclopedia Britannica's explanation of Occam's razor principle is, of two competing theories, the simpler explanation of an entity is to be preferred. First, let us take a look at some of the theories that have been put forward in this mysterious case and some extremely bizarre events that happened after Bradley's disappearance. The 2005 Website Photograph Since her disappearance in 1998, Amy Lynn Bradley has reportedly been seen many times. Two images of a woman were included in an email sent to the Bradley family website in 2005 that was most upsetting for the family. A member of an organization that tries to trace possible victims on sites that showcase sex workers spotted these images. The photographs feature a scantily clad woman who closely resembles Amy and seems distressed and despondent. The public saw one of these photographs when the Bradley family appeared on the Dr. Phil program. She is being held as a sex worker. In January 1999, a Navy petty officer claimed to have seen Amy in a hotel brothel on the island of Curacao. Amy, recognizing him as an American, allegedly disclosed her name, said she was being kept against her will, and asked for assistance. Unfortunately, the officer kept the information to himself out of concern of the implications his solicitation of a sex worker would bring. After his retirement, he contacted the Bradleys via their website. A band member may have been involved in Amy's abduction. On the evening of March 23rd, after supper, Bradley was seen entering the ship's disco and dancing with a member of the ship's band. This man, Alistair Yellow Douglas, and Amy were even recorded repeatedly by a camera person producing a cruise company promotional video. When the video producer learned of Amy's disappearance, he believed she must have been in part of the footage from the evening in question. After leaving her room, Amy was spotted with Douglas at 6am near the disco. Eventually, a witness would claim to have seen Douglas hand Bradley a dark beverage, perhaps coffee. Other witnesses saw Douglas leaving the scene alone, although Amy was never seen again. After conducting a polygraph on Douglas, police finally cleared him, but before the FBI had viewed the disco tape. Bradley was sighted on a Curacao beach. In August of 1998, a Canadian called David Carmichael met two men and a woman strolling on a beach near Port of Maria, Curacao. When he talked loudly in English to a friend a few feet away, the woman abruptly turned round and started walking towards him. Just as the woman was going to talk to him, one of the men gave her a clear signal to leave. 
She entered a tiny cafe dejectedly with the two men, but continued to gaze at Carmichael any time she could get his attention. Carmichael did not know who Amy was until he watched her profile on the television program Unsolved Mysteries. As a result of his close observation, he was able to explain Amy's distinguishing tattoos when he called the Bradleys. He claims to be 100% convinced that he saw Amy Bradley. The Bradleys were scammed by fake Navy SEALs. Frank Jones called the Bradleys in the autumn of 1999 and reported that Amy Lynn was being held by Colombian gangsters on the island of Curacao. This was perhaps the most despicable incident of the whole Amy Lynn Bradley saga. Jones claimed to be a former member of the United States Special Forces and volunteered to assist in Amy's rescue. In addition, he said he had an eyewitness to Amy's whereabouts, a chef who exactly described Amy's tattoos, and even a song Mrs. Bradley taught Amy to sing when she was a child. Two other former Navy SEALs were apparently sent to Curacao to pinpoint Amy's location. When Jones requested further funding to support the actual armed rescue, the Bradleys sought proof of life that their daughter was under Jones's team's surveillance. He responded with a photograph of a similarly tattooed woman who resembled Amy, and the Bradleys gave him the remaining balance. The sum totaled $210,000. The Bradleys were ordered to go to Florida in order to wait for a phone call from Jones once Amy was rescued. They waited a week at a motel before receiving a call from one of Jones's associates who had also been fooled by Jones and concluding that the whole operation was a fraud. The chef, the photographs, the Colombians, and the monitored home were all hoaxes. Jones, who had never served in the special forces, pleaded guilty to mail fraud and was sentenced to five years in prison and had to pay reparations to the family. What would the most logical explanation for the disappearance of Amy Bradley be? Bradley studied and graduated from Longwood University with a degree in physical education. She attended college on a basketball scholarship, was well known for her swimming skills, and had previously worked as a lifeguard. Amy intended to begin a new position at a computer consulting business after her graduation from college. Amy chose to accompany her family on a cruise holiday on the Royal Caribbean International Ship Rhapsody of the Sea, en route to Curacao, a Dutch Caribbean island, as a celebratory event for her graduation. Amy and her family boarded the cruise bound for Curacao on March 21, 1998. Amy and her brother Brad chose to stay up late dancing at a Mardi Gras nightclub party and drinking with the ship's band Blue Orchid. Alistair Douglas, also known as Yellow, a member of the band, was drinking with Amy that night and said he left the party about 1 a.m. After a couple of hours at around 3.35 a.m., Brad Bradley opted to spend the rest of the night at the family cabin. The ship's electronic door lock system recorded that Brad and Amy returned to their cabins at 3.35 a.m and 3.40 a.m. respectively. Brad said that he and his sister sat on the balcony of their suite and chatted before he fell asleep, while Amy remained up for a little longer, before falling asleep soon afterwards. Ron, Amy's father, awoke between 5.15 and 5.30 a.m. on March 24th to check on his children and saw Amy still asleep on the lounge chair on the balcony of their cabin. However, when he awoke at 6 a.m., she was gone, along with her cigarettes and lighter. Later, he stated, I left to try and go up and find her. When I couldn't find her, I didn't really know what to think, because it was very much unlike Amy to leave and not tell us where she was going. After searching the general area of the cruise ship, he woke the rest of the family and informed them that Amy was missing at around 6.30 a.m., According to reports, the crew disregarded the family's request to keep the ship away from the dock to prevent an abductor from bringing her ashore. The crew staff did not issue a pager for the missing woman 
until the ship had moored in Curacao and most of the passengers had already disembarked. The authorities first believed that Amy had either fallen overboard or committed suicide. Amy was a good swimmer, her corpse was never discovered in the water, and there was no indication of foul play, so this theory was quickly discarded. Using Occam's razor principle, the most likely and logical explanation for Bradley's disappearance is that she fell overboard and drowned. Her last known location was on the balcony of her cabin, and after a night of heavy drinking, losing her balance and falling overboard is a plausible explanation. In 2010, a jawbone washed up in Aruba, which provides more evidence for this scenario. Initially, it was believed to be the jawbone of another missing person, Natalie Holloway. However, after it was found not to be Holloway's, police suspended further testing despite the fact that nine other Caribbean tourists were reported missing. No DNA analysis was performed on the bone. The authorities have established that the bone is human and possibly of Caucasian descent. Could this evidence be the missing piece of the puzzle?